Hey guys, do you ever have these symptoms? I want to draw something awesome, but I feel so demotivated. Or I have this idea and I feel I have the energy, but for some reason I still don't want to or can't pick up the pencil and get started. Sounds familiar, right? Exactly. This is something that is called procrastination. So why don't we do some self-analysis and see what, what this procrastination is all about? What is it? Procrastination goes something like this. We have a task that we want to do or that needs to be done. This task creates automatic thoughts in us and these are usually negative thoughts. These negative thoughts create negative feelings. Nobody likes negative feelings, so we will try to do everything possible to avoid these feelings. But we know that these elaborate avoidance maneuvers are not what we were supposed to do, so we come up with excuses justifying the avoidance. And we feel better, at least until we are faced again with the fact that the task still hasn't been done. Let's go through these tasks step by step again and let's have a closer look. And I'm not going to dig into the task section so I can keep it as open as possible so everybody can at least relate to this video even if they're not necessarily drawing people because procrastination is sort of touching all of us, right? So let us talk about these automatic thoughts. What happens many times is that the, the task in front of us just feels absolutely overwhelming. And uh, one of the main things that pops out here, one of these thoughts is, is self-doubt. Or since I'm mostly targeting creatives with vi this video, thoughts that fall under the umbrella of uh, perfectionism. Like we always imagine something in our head and we want to create that exact thing, like perfectly as we saw it in our head. And most of the time it doesn't happen, right? But with this, with perfectionism, also comes a little bit of social rejection. Because even though creatives love to say that, oh no, I'm an introvert, I am an introvert. <laughs> At the same time, we do have this like, hey guys, look, I did this. What do you think? We want to share our drawings. We wouldn't put them on Instagram. I wouldn't be here on YouTube, I guess. We are a little bit self, self-absorbed. And us creatives want to share the, the thing that we created, the thing that we put our love into. So this is where uh, rejection comes in, social rejection. And also to step away a little bit from the creatives, a, a thought that is a much more general thought is that everything needs to be fun immediately. Like there is no more grind, there is no more grit. I mean, they're there, but we don't want to do them. Like when we start a task, we want the task to be fun. But obviously there are many more thoughts. These were just a couple of examples I wanted to bring up. Now, an interesting thing is that feelings most often come from thoughts. It's not something that is self-evident to most people, but most of the time you're, uh, you're confronted with a situation, uh, immediately some thoughts come to mind and those thoughts create some feelings in you. Uh, let's take me for an example. If somebody asks me to draw a robot, First thought that comes to mind, what sort of robot is it? Is it a bipedal? Is it a quadrupedal? Uh, quadrupedal? <laughs> is, is it a fighting robot? Is it an industrial robot? Who built it? What is the, the world creation around the, the, the robot? A, a lot of thoughts that also bring these feelings with them. Excitement, anticipation. On the other hand, if I'm being asked to draw a female face, it's a whole different thing because I remember, oh, wait, I don't know the exact proportions. I always make my heads a bit bigger than I'm supposed to. My eyes usually go a little bit closer than they're supposed to. And like these, okay, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of stress comes with the, these thoughts because, oh, I, I don't even want to get started because I know that I'm just going to mess it up again. So from task to thought and to all of these negative feelings and who wants to have these negative feelings? Obviously not us humans. So we're trying to avoid these. And by avoiding the feelings, obviously, first of all, we, we, we're going to avoid the task because the task causes the feelings. So that's the whole procrastination thing. And one of the best ways of uh, avoiding things is escapism. And that's where video games, movies, series, or uh, just scrolling endlessly on your preferred social media feed come in. We want to release all those feel-good chemicals in our brains 
and forget about the, the nasty feeling that was just caused by the task. Interestingly enough, we can be quite smart here and trick ourselves into doing things that seem to be and sometimes also are actually useful for us. All of a sudden we start tidying up the room, we start vacuuming, uh, putting uh, the laundry into the washing machine and uh, look at that, even the dishes that haven't been done for days, all of a sudden they're being done. Eh? And all of this in the glorious pursuit of trying to avoid the original task that we're supposed to do. But as things usually go with us humans, nasty little buggers start showing up called guilt, reminding us that we still didn't do the task. After all, the task needs to be done sooner or later. So now our brain goes into overdrive, coming up with excellent excuses why this task can't be done now and has to be postponed somewhere into to an undisclosed time in the future. We say things to ourselves like, I'm too tired now, I'll do it tomorrow, or uh, I don't have everything I need for this task, I can't start like this, or I'm getting sleepy, I'll be much more productive in the morning when I'm fresh or I have plenty of time to do it later, or I work much better under pressure, so it's better if I leave it for later, and many other similar nuggets. And this will work, until we are faced with the fact that the task still hasn't been done, and then the whole cycle starts again. By now you're probably saying, okay, thank you for making me feel bad about my habit, now help me solve it. Well, see, that's the hard part because you're the only one who can break the habit and stop procrastinating. I'm not one of those uh, financial or self-help gurus from the YouTube advertisement that uh, stand in front of a Lamborghini and can tell you exactly what you have to do to become rich or to solve your problems or to be happy. No. What I can do is give you a couple of pointers to catch yourself being in the middle of, of a procrastination cycle and maybe point you also towards some things that you can start doing to get out of it. First thing you have to do is like with most types of problem solving is become aware of the problem. And by that, in this case, I mean that you have to analyze those automatic and negative thoughts that are causing the negative feelings in you. And trust me, this is one of the hardest parts. Why do you think us humans love to put in earphones when we go jogging or, or biking or when we drive somewhere in a longer drive, we always have to have the radio on? It's because we do not want to be left alone with our own thoughts. It's scary. Usually when we're alone and we just let our head run, we come up with a lot of negative things. We pinpoint things in our life that we didn't like and obviously a lot of negativity, but that is right what we have to concentrate on. We need to take a closer look at these uh, negative thoughts that popped up. We need to analyze them more. We need to see how much of them are true. And most importantly, we want to change them into sort of positive or at least not so negative thoughts. Because as we said earlier, if you change the thought, the feeling comes with it. And how do we analyze them? Just, just ask a question. Is it a true thought or is it maybe false? Do we fool ourselves? How realistic is that thought? One of the best ways I found to approach this is imagine if one of your friends would say these things about themselves out loud or would think these things about themselves out loud. How would you re react to them? Uh, what would you say to them? Usually we are much harsher to ourselves than we are to others. And this is also a bias that, that we have. So these are biased thoughts. And there are ways and methods for identifying these biased thoughts. Here are a couple of pointers for you to easier identify these biased thoughts. Thinking in absolutes, always, ever, never. Focusing purely on the negative and disregarding the positive. Predicting the future. Oh, it's going to turn out shit anyway. Labeling yourself. Ah, I'm a bad artist because my drawings are shit anyway. Blowing things out of proportion. Oh, I messed up this leg of this small character in this whole drawing. So the whole drawing is shit. Realize these thoughts are not realistic or nuanced. Most of the time they are simply not true. So to make sure that you understand this, take some time and come up with a couple of reasons why these thoughts are not true. When it comes to drawing, one of the main reasons I procrastinate is that I start, so first of all, I want to do too much 
and I know that I won't be able to do it as nicely as I imagine in my head. So I'm just like, in my head, I'm going, okay, I'm shit anyway, and I'm not worth anything because I, I can't get this done as, as I want it to be done. And at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm just not going to do it. And it's a perfect time to start procrastinating. But at that point, I could also just start asking myself, am I really that bad at drawing? I mean, people like my stuff. People want to watch my videos. People want to learn from me. And I also have clients who pay me for my work. So obviously my work is appreciated and has value. So there are at least three truths that help these negative feelings dissipate. Continuing on the same way of thinking, you can also have reminders of these truths. You can have post-its. You can put them on your monitor or on the wall where you're drawing. Or you can also have a poster, maybe a poster of... Uh, a drawing that you made that, that you really like and just write little notes or just create your own poster with little sayings in it, like specifically for this purpose. And finally, this is what works usually best for me is just to take action because people forget this, but many times motivation follows action, not the other way around. So what I do, if I know that I have to draw a female character and I just don't feel like lifting the pencil, I don't feel like drawing, Okay, no problem. I love drawing techie stuff. I love drawing vehicles, military stuff. Pinterest, look up some mil military vehicles. I don't need to put any effort. I'm just going to copy the military vehicle that I see there. Just a nice little study. Okay, that's fun. I enjoy that. Maybe do another one with a character or just maybe just put a character in there. So I'm going to look up a soldier now. I'm going to make sure that, okay, let's try and draw the anatomy of the soldier uh, as good as possible. And then I have the soldier down. And then it depends how many uh, steps I need in between. I can, okay, let me draw another soldier, just concentrating on the soldier. But since I had this soldier, well, I draw a human, I could also just draw a girl. And now I just look at girl reference and boom, there we are. I didn't want to draw a girl in the beginning. I didn't even want to pick up my pencil, but now I am drawing a girl. And that's how it works for me. And remember, I'm not saying this will work 100% for everybody. No, it might not. But as harsh as it sounds, there is some truth in the, oh, come on, just do it. Get over it. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it works. At least it works for me by this, uh, this roundabout approach. And that was the video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun doing it, but I also put in a lot of effort into it. So if you liked it, please hit that like button. <laughs> also consider subscribing and clicking that little bell button because uh, yeah, the, we, need to, we need to follow the YouTube algorithm, sadly. Uh, for regular drawing updates, you can follow my Instagram and also you can join my Discord server. Links for both of them in the description down below. If you say, hey, I like this guy. I would like to support him. Well, there's links to different ways you can support me, Gumroad and whatnot in the description down below as well. But as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So there are at least three truths, three truths. That's hard to say. A couple of truths, truths, ah, three truths, three truths. So there are at least three, three.